สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. Today, finally, I'm going to show you how to make a Thai sausage. Now, there are a couple different types of Thai sausage. The one we're making today is from the north of Thailand. It's called Sai Ua. So Sai means intestine, and Ua in the northern Thai dialect means to stuff. So you know. Pretty straightforward there. Um, it's pork sausages with tons of herbs, and it's spicy, and it's so good with sticky rice or just on its own as a snack. And it's one of the easiest sausages to make at home. So let's get started. So the very basic level: you're making a curry paste, you're mixing it with some ground pork, and that's it. You're done. Okay. So the key thing here is the curry paste. So I've got here some dry chilies. Here I like to use our bold chilies, which I find gives a nice medium amount of spiciness. Okay. I've removed some seeds to cut the spiciness, but not all, because I do want some heat in there. And I'm just gonna throw these in my coffee grinder. A couple of rebel chili pieces. Gotta get those. <laughs> Woo! Okay. So the rest of the curry paste, I am actually going to use my trusty immersion blender, which I love for making curry paste. I've talked about this before. If you're interested about it, it is listed in my kit. I'll put the link in the description below. It's a great tool for blending thick things like curry paste. Okay. So in here, I'm going to add some herbs. I've got here some lemongrass, which I've chopped up, some galangal pieces, which I've also chopped up, and also some turmeric. This is extremely important. Turmeric is a key ingredient in this dish. Um, if you don't have whole, which is looks like that, if you don't have that, you can use powdered turmeric instead. No problem. Okay. So all of this is going to go in. All the chopped herbs, some shallots and garlic, and then of course, some shrimp paste. <laughs> You can't make a curry paste without shrimp paste. So shrimp paste looks like this, and this brand is actually one that I find is most widely available outside of Thailand. So that's why I wanted to show you just the jar here. Eh, eh, come on. There we go. So the next ingredient is optional. I'm just using it because I have it, and I don't really. Find it very often, so I was really excited to use it. So this is kefir lime. Hey, so we always use the leaves, but I found the actual fruit yesterday. So I'm actually going to use the zest in my curry paste, which is usually what we end up using the zest for. I've already used half of it for something else, so you only need half of a fruit. And because it's bumpy, I don't like to use uh, like a microplane grater. Because it's hard to grate something that's super rough, so I just take a knife and thinly slice off the green part. Try not to get too much of the white part because that's bitter. Just FYI, if you accidentally cut out too much of the white part, this isn't too much. But if, say, for example, you did put too much, you just take one of these and use an, a sharp knife and go like this to try to slice off as much of the white part as possible. So now all that. Goes in. So now I'm gonna also add fish sauce in here just to help it grind a little bit. That's it. That's the only seasoning that we have is fish sauce, and that's it. I'm gonna grind this up. Almost forgot to add my chilies. I was thinking that looks strangely dull. <laughs> yes, don't forget your chilies. Et voilà. That looks pretty fine to me. I love this thing; saves so much time. But of course, you can do this old school in a mortar and pestle if you wish. All right, so I've got some ground pork here, and before you ask, yes, you can do this with chicken. Yes, you can do this with beef or whatever meat you like. It's just not done in Thailand. In Thailand, if you see sight wood, it's always pork. But if you're gonna make it yourself, go crazy with whatever you want, as long as it's not lean. We're making sausages here, so you'll want the fat, or your sausages are going to be dry. So the curry paste goes in. It's a lot of curry paste for the amount of pork. That's how you know it's gonna be delicious. Now, before you mix that in, protect yourself. And yes, if you want to be intimate with your food, you can do this without gloves. But you know, just be careful where you put your hand afterwards because this is spicy. Okay. So once the curry paste and the pork have been mixed together well, I'm gonna add my fresh herbs. So I've got some green onions, some cilantro. And some kefir lime leaves, which I finely, finely mint. So you want to make sure with these, you take out the center spine of the leaves. 
you julienne them as finely as you can and then run your knife one more time. You want to be able to cut nice neat slices. You don't want, you know, big stick strings of kefir lime leaves sticking out, right? So you want fine, fine, fine pieces and just get these all mixed up. Okay, so once you see that the greens are evenly distributed, that's it. That's all you need to do. So now you've got a decision to make. You can form the sausages however you like. You want to go traditional and hardcore, get sausage casing and go through the process. Or if you don't have a lot of time, you can just do sausage patties if you like. I am going to show you how you can make caseless sausages. So we're still making sausage shaped things, but it'll be without having to go through the trouble of casing because for me anyway, like I don't even know where to go find sausage casing in Vancouver. And I imagine for many of you, it's not an easy process as well. So that's why I want to share you this trick. So let me clean up and we'll be right back. So this is the part you can get your kids or your friends and your neighbors involved and have a sausage making party. So if you care about making the sausages the same size, I suggest just using a measuring cup or something. Half a cup is a good size. I'm gonna dump my sausage right in the middle. Now I'm just gonna fold this over and press this down. For half a cup, I think about eight inches. Here's a little pro tip. It's very useful to know how long your body parts are. So for me, I know that my hand span is eight inches. So when I need to do something and I think I need eight inches, I just put my hand against it and I know that that's eight inches. Then I know my thumb's two inches and so on and so forth. And so very handy information. Okay, so I need a little bit longer. And you can do meatballs, you can do any shape you want. Okay, that looks perfect. So now I'm gonna just roll the rest of this up. Tie the ends like old-fashioned toffee. Smooth out any, you know, any bumps, any unevenness. And that's it. I got one sausage. Woohoo! Check out my sausages. At this point, you want to let these sit in the fridge for at least, at least two hours. I like to do it the day before. It'll help these firm up. Cooking will be a lot easier when they're a little firmer. But most importantly, the flavors need time to mingle and marry. The herbs and spices need time to penetrate every molecule of the pork. So regardless of how you make this, whether you stuff it, you make patties, you make balls, whatever you do, give the sausages time regardless. Oh, one more thing too, I should have said earlier, is if this is your first time making, make sure you taste the mixture before you form them. Just, you know, cook a little bit in the microwave or on a skillet to see if it needs more salt, if it needs more spicy, so you can fix it before it's too late. All right, so we'll let these sit and we'll be right back. Sausage cooking time. So depending on how you've decided to form your sausage, it's going to affect how you uh, cook them. For patties, just go ahead and fry them on a skillet. If you've stuffed them, grilling them is traditional over the barbecue. But for these, because they are super delicate, there's a bit of an art to it. So what I do is I first start them out on a sheet pan like this with foil underneath. And as they cook, um, and firm up. So I'm going to do them under the broiler, by the way. And as they cook and firm up, they're going to release a lot of liquid. And I don't want to keep them sort of stewing in their own juices. So once they firm up, I transfer them onto a rack and let them finish off dry. And the reason why I don't want to start them on the rack from the beginning is because my rack is too wide and it'll dig into the sausage, right? However, I've discovered that Adam's toaster oven has this rack which I think will work really well. So I'm gonna try it out for today. It's still got these drain holes. So if you've got something like this, definitely try it out. Ta-da! Look, it was like the rack was made for my sausages. Okay, so under the broiler until each side is nice and brown, then you go and rotate them so that they're all browned all over. And it should take about four to five minutes per side. Look at these sausages, they look and smell so good. Although I thought I made them all the same size, so I'm not sure what happened to that one extra long. I've let these cool a little bit. You don't want to be cutting these when they're piping hot or the juices are going to come gushing out. And by the way, this rack worked out pretty well. However, I think um, next time I have to remember to oil the rack first because the first flip was a little bit sticky. Let's do the middle guy here and always slice on a bias for prettier presentation. Ooh, look at this. 
Oh, yes, it looks perfect. That turmeric, yellow color from the turmeric came through. Still looks nice and juicy. Oh, yeah. So normally you would serve this with like some sticky rice, maybe with some fresh vegetables. But for now, mm, I swear you've never had a sausage so flavorful. I mean, it's tender, it's juicy, but the herbs, man, the herbs just really come out. Just the right amount of spice. You taste the turmeric, you taste the lemongrass, the lime leaves. I mean, it's really an amazing combination. And, and I know that you might be tempted to just like get store-bought curry paste and then just put it in instead of the curry paste that we made. I really encourage you to make it from scratch because there is something in that unique combination of turmeric and those herbs that make Sai Ua its own thing. So delicious. Oh, so good. All right, let's finish this video so I can go and eat all of this. <laughs> so the recipe, as always, will be on hotthaikitchen.com. When you make it, send me a photo on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. If you haven't subscribed to the show, make sure you do so you don't miss an awesome episode like this. And when you do, click the little bell icon so you get a notification when I post a new video. If you love the show and you want to support us, check out our Patreon link in the description below. And I will see you next time for your next delicious time. Check out these sausages. They look so good. Although I could have sworn I made them all the same size. And I don't know what happened to that one. We got a little excited. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs>